Good evening, and welcome to this month's edition of The School Zone. I'm your student host, Matt Sauer, and tonight we begin our journey into The School Zone with a look at the Sioux Falls Teacher of the Year. We'll begin with a look at the five finalists and then introduce you to Barb Dowling, the 2005 Sioux Falls Teacher of the Year. Charlie Duchesne, seventh grade science teacher at Axtell Park, has taught at Axtell for 39 years. He has a bachelor's degree from Northern State University and a master's from the University of South Dakota. He uses a strong lab-based approach in the classroom with hands-on demonstrations and learning activities. He also uses humor and attention-getting demonstrations to intrigue his young audience. Teresa Pertel has taught elementary school in Sioux Falls for 19 years. She did her undergraduate work at South Dakota State and the University of South Dakota and earned her master's degree from Southwest State University. To help her kindergarten students work through interpersonal situations in her classroom, Teresa has created a resolution table, a special table where students take each other when someone has hurt their feelings or done something to upset them. At this table, they work out their own solutions. Washington High School physics teacher Jeffrey Burnt entered a career in banking, but 10 years later returned to college to become a high school teacher. He earned a bachelor's degree in general science, physics, and mathematics, a bachelor's in education, and a master's in technology. He designs his classroom around his students. Lynn Gillette has taught school in Sioux Falls for five years. She did her undergraduate work at the University of Minnesota and the University of Wyoming. She'll complete her master's degree this May. As she enters the classroom each day, she asks herself, what do I wish for in a teacher of my own children? To help parents help their children, Lynn has created a literacy training program called Teaming Up for Literacy. Parents attend the program three Sunday afternoons to learn how to actively be part of their child's learning. Barbara Dowling has taught early childhood for the Sioux Falls School District for 11 years. She has a bachelor's degree from South Dakota State University and has completed three master's degrees. Program Administrator Brenda Bernard. Barb's passion for her children is evident upon walking in her classroom. Her room isn't decorated with purchased posters or pictures of famous people. It is decorated with photographs of her children exploring and learning. Barb demonstrates and celebrates children's learning visually. The fact that this nomination was initiated by the two education assistants who are in Barb's room every day speaks volumes to me. Parents whose child has been diagnosed with autism said of Barbara's influence in their lives. Barbara represented the right kind of hope because she never said our daughter's challenges would become any less or disappear. Instead, Barbara's mentorship showed us that the road ahead would be rather tough, but by taking ownership of our daughter's issues, we could persevere and see value on the road that we would travel with her. The passion for teaching radiates through her dedication, her kindness, her patience, and her respect for all students. What we have also gained from our years of experience is the unconditional love that she has for her students. This is something we have seen firsthand, watching her teach the unteachable. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present Barbara Dowling. The 2005 Teacher of the Year. Okay, Barb, can you tell us mm -hmm. how you felt when they announced you as Teacher of the Year? I was very, very surprised. It was a very wonderful feeling. Uh, also a very humbling feeling because after watching the video, all of the teachers had a real specialty that they imparted to their children. So it was quite an honor. Now, how long have you been teaching? I've been teaching in the Sioux Falls District for 11 years, but before that I've been at this ball game for over 30 years. Barb, can you tell me, have you seen many changes in the last 30 years? There's been different theories of learning advanced over the last 30 years. There's been a lot of research in the brain and how the brain functions and how that impacts education. There's been a lot of different changes as far as federal programs that we are now mandated to do, and that creates a lot of paperwork for us. Um, and the federal programs change a lot, and it seems like we're always changing requirements, and it makes a big difference in what we need to do and how much paperwork takes our time up where we really like to be with the kids and interacting in the classroom. But as far as early childhood, there's been a lot of new programs, new innovations, as far as what is developmentally appropriate for those children and how we surely focus a lot on their socialization in early childhood and their 
creative beings, their ability to construct knowledge and information and to become learners who can show us the way that they can learn best. I assume patience is a big part of being an early childhood teacher. Yeah, patience plays a huge role in there. And I guess just accepting the children for where they're at. And once you do that, then you kind of understand maybe why they're doing certain things and what motivates them. And you learn to be at their level and to work with them. And that kind of helps that patience thing along. Now with early childhood education, some people might see it as a glorified babysitter. Can you tell us that, I'm sure there's more to it than, than that, can you tell us about that? Well, we hope we are and we really believe we are. Um, as teachers, we're learners along these, alongside them and we're really trying to create an environment which stimulates that learning. They just don't come and run around and play games and <clears throat> those kinds of things, but it's really important to look at the ordinary moments those children have and to make them extraordinary. To see a child start to develop something in an area he's playing in the block area. Maybe he learns about inclined planes at a time and he puts a board in a slant and knows that the cars go down there faster. So then it's to go over to him and to sit with them and ask him some probing questions like what do you think would happen if we did this or if we had a bigger car or if we had a smaller car so they can take where they're at in their learning and expand it and that's really <clears throat> the important thing is to make those ordinary moments extraordinary for them and to expand the knowledge and the information in which they have at that point in time. What's the best part of the day in early childhood? Oh, there are good parts off and on throughout the day. Um, the kids come, they're excited to be here, and that's rewarding. Uh, they come in, um, they really know now in the year, they know the structure, they interact with books. They've developed relationships between themselves, and so that's really exciting to see. Any time during the day, you can find that extraordinary moment, and that is rewarding at that point in time. How many hours <laughs> in a day do you have the children? Uh, the children come, the first session comes at about 10 to 9, and then they're leaving us at about 12.20. And the second session is coming at that time, and they are here from 12.20 until 4 o'clock. Okay. If someone was to just start teaching and you could give them some advice, what, would, what advice would you give them? Probably to learn why and how children learn, to come to the children understanding the theories of constructivism of Piaget and Bruner and Dewey and all of those great educators we've had in the past and to understand the theory of why children learn and how they learn rather than just knowing how to present a few quick games and things like that but really to challenge them to help them build their relationships between each other and to grow and expand their knowledge and information. And if they can do that with children, they'll have a great career. They'll know how to teach. They'll accept the children where they are, and they'll find joy in it. Now, as also as part of a kind of a reward of being Teacher of the Year, you received a check from Vernity Motor Cars. Can you tell me, do you have any plans for that sum of money? I have some ideas. I'm not sure where I'm going them then. <clears throat> there is a study tour I would love to go on, and it addresses the, appro the Reggio Emilia approach, which now we say we're inspired by that approach. And it's very constructivist-based, very much John Dewey, democratic education, and they have some really interesting theories. They do offer study tours. It would be nice to attend one of those. Um, but right now, that's an option. I haven't made any final decisions, but that would really help along to for me to be able to afford something like that. It's very expensive, and so that would kind of help defray the costs. It's been a little over a week. You've been Teacher of the Year. What kind of response have you received? There's been a great response from the teachers here at Hawthorne. They're all excited, and there's been really great response from the other early childhood teachers in Sioux Falls. They kind of feel like we've kind of made it. People will know who we are now, and they will see us uh, as true educators, and it's just exciting to see that. The other thing that's exciting, I've had cards from parents of former students that I've had many, many years ago uh, who have written to me and sent me pictures of the kids now. And so it's really exciting to see that and to hear from them. And that's very rewarding in and of itself.
The Sioux Falls School District began a new reading program in the high schools. Let's find out more about the FAME program. Hi, I'm CJ Carmody and this is Cheryl O'Brien and we are here to introduce you to the Reading is at Fame program as it has implemented in the Sioux Falls School District. In 1996, the Girls and Boys Town Reading Center introduced the nation to one of the most exciting and promising reading intervention programs, Reading is Fame. Fame continues to reverse reading failures and significantly improve the lives of thousands of adolescents in middle and secondary schools. Enhanced decoding skills, developed fluency, expanded vocabularies, better comprehension, greater confidence, and self Im improved self-esteem characterize the benefits of the FAME program. The core curriculum of FAME consists of four courses. Each one is one semester in length. Course one, Foundations of Reading, is designed to meet the needs of su students who have significant struggles with reading. The relationship between most common letter combinations and sounds is the focus of this course. The second course, Adventures in Readings, continues to help students improve oral reading fluency and the ability to recognize words and meanings is emphasized. Mastery of Meaning, Course 3, helps students increase comprehension by expanding the knowledge of word meanings. And the final course, Explorations, promotes the ability to integrate information into reading and writing. The curriculum is rooted in Dr. Um, Charles' theory of reading development. The idea is that le learning to read is a process. A reader require, acquires skills at each stage of development. That is why this curriculum progresses from helping students identify words in print and build fluency to providing students with multiple opportunities to acquire new concepts and analyze what they have read. How many words have we studied so far? Very good. 120 vocabulary words. Okay, my name is Shirley Gary, and I teach a mastery class in our FAME program. At this point in, uh, in the semester, they have had 120 vocabulary words, and uh, each word, um, approximately, they have had 12 to 15 exposures to each word. And so that gives them adequate time to, to really get to know the vocabulary that we are studying. So that is a huge part of mastery, is mastering vocabulary, and at the same time, um, learning, practicing, comprehension. And that's why we do the silent reading. And we also work with some, uh, the conversation helps them to critically think about the words. We focus on vocabulary, and we focus on, on reading trying to enhance, enhance their reading skills and better prepare them for, for their other classes that they will take. My name is Erica Peterson. I go to Lincoln High School. I am in a mastery class with Mrs. Gary. I really like this class. At the beginning of class, we have a pre-test on Mondays, and then we have a post-test on Fridays. I like the class a lot. It's really fun. Okay, um, my name is Joey Russell, and I teach FAME here at the Washington High School building, and I'm, I have FAME three periods a day. Um, right now, currently in this semester, I'm teaching Mastery, and Mastery is the third in the sequence of classes. It goes F, A, M, and E. Um, mastery is very vocabulary focused, so we spend a great deal of time focusing on words, and we also spend focusing on reading, of course, naturally. Um, the M and the E class really goes from learning to read to reading to learn, and so we really, really use these words, and we use them in our reading, and we use them in our daily questions. And it, I've just seen great growth in these students, and I've had these particular students um, since they were at the beginning, so I've got to watch them grow, which is just incredible. They're reading for pleasure now. They're asking me for book recommendations, so that is so great. All right, my name is Penny White, and I'm an education assistant. I help in FAME. FAME is a great program. I can tell you from experience, uh, when I started in January, the, the students were kind of behind on reading, and it, it's incredible on how much they have learned. I'm Jordan Thompson. I go to Washington High School. I'm in ninth grade, and I'm in FAME. I'm in mastery right now. And we're just learn, learning to write paragraphs in the right way and vocabulary words. How is this helping you in school? It's helping me how to read better and understand the literature that I'm reading. My name is Sarah Barlick. I go to Washington School. I'm, in, I'm a freshman. And in fame, we, 
Well, right now we're in Masteries and we play games and we have a whole bunch of fun and different reading things and we have a lot of fun in the fame. Okay, we saw you in there playing a game. Can you explain exactly how that works? Um, 10,000 Pyramid is where we have one person goes up to the overhead and we can see it, the one that goes up there, and we have to explain the word, but we cannot say the word or say anything like the antonyms or synonyms to it. And we have to make sh see if they can get the word. I'm Julie Austin, and the class that I'm teaching this period is Adventures in Reading. And this class is designed for 10 students. We break up into two small groups. Half of the class is working on oral reading and being fluent in their reading. Um, if they ever make a mistake on a word, the only one that can supply the word is the teacher. And it really builds um, their reading fluency, being able to read um, without mistakes and without errors. I see a big increase in self-confidence as far as oral reading goes from the beginning of the year until now. Hi, I'm Michelle Ratzloff. I'm an EA in the Adventures Reading Program. And um, we split up our room and I was helping the kids learn 10 vocabulary words for the week by doing computer games and then we do a word game. We did Password today and the game we played was Techno on the Computer. My name is Sean Dickens. I'm from Washington School High School. Um, I'm in the class foundations of I should know it's called FAME, so it's a good class. It's like a resource for kids. You can learn about different new words that are hard to say and how to pronounce them correctly and stuff, so it's pretty fun. Um, I'm Roberta Riam. Um, I'm in FAME, and we read and we do game activities. We get words each week. And we, for the whole week, Monday we do a pretest, and then from Monday to Friday we do word activities and then we do computer games. And then on Friday we take our post test. Um, my name is Wendy Epling, and today you observed one of the adventure classes. Um, during a 50 minute period, we do act three different activities. We um, first kind of review our homework assignment, and then some of the kids split up into groups. Today you um, observed CORE, which is Collaborative Oral Reading, where the students have 20 minutes of, of um, oral reading where they um, read aloud and then they pass to their, to their peers. It increases their reading fluency. And then the other group works on our vocabulary words that we're um, learning about for the week. Hi, I'm Matt Oldenburg. I'm a sophomore at Roosevelt High School. Um, at the start last year, I I, I didn't think it was a really good class, but now I'm really liking it, and I'm improving my reading level by about two grades. All right, hi, I'm Jeremy Bosmo, and I'm a freshman at Roosevelt High School. Can you tell us a little bit about the Jeopardy game you were playing? It's just a game to help you figure out vocab words, remember them, and uh, just yeah, remember them. And how good are you at that game? I'm awesome. Hi, Rachel Larson. I'm a freshman at Roosevelt High School. I like, I didn't like reading last year when I was an eighth grader, but Ms. Epling helped me and improve on my reading, and I like reading a lot more books and stuff. Yeah, my name's Nathan Bass. I'm in the Fame program, and I'm in Adventures. I like Password, because I mostly get all the points. My name is William Eastman, and I'm in ninth grade, and I'm in the FAME program. It's very fun. We do lots of stuff. Um, my name is Tanya Axner. I am a sophomore at Roosevelt. Um, I'm also in the FAME, pro FAME program, and it is a lot of fun, and it does help just, you know, it does the English thing. Like, it does everything. It's just a regular English class with messed up words. and They're kind of cool, but they're words that you would know. My name is Mary Gail Monahan. I teach the FAME reading program at Roosevelt High School. I think the beauty of the FAME program is that the students um, have a variety of activities that they're um, exposed to on a weekly basis. Um, it gives them um, the opportunity to practice using the words not only 
orally in their speaking, but also in their writing, which is um, so valuable and which is really the true test of knowing whether or not a student um, has mastered that vocabulary word and made it his own. A student at Edison Middle School recently performed on stage in New York City. We asked Tracy Silverberg to tell us about her exciting opportunity. Hi, I'm Mrs. Rice and I am an, a humanities teacher and speech and drama teacher at Edison Middle School. It was my pleasure to recommend Tracy, as well as several other Edison students, for the contest Bravo On With The Show. Bravo On With The Show allows students to go to actually participate in um, activities on Broadway and then put together a show. So for Tracy that meant that she earned the opportunity to go to Broadway, which she'll be telling you about. I first got, I first learned about it by um, my speech and drama teacher, she's also my humanities teacher, uh, Mrs. Rice, and she brought it to our attention one day, and um, so I took it home and I read through it and everything, and then I decided that I really wanted to try for, try for this, and then, um, so I went home and I started writing, and it, it took me a while to get through everything, but um, actually the day before we had to mail everything in, I I just told Mrs. Rice that I had been done, and so she, she was actually sick that day, so she had to work hard to get everything done. But we flew it out, and it got, we, it got there on time. And then we got a call January, I think, 20th. And my dad got a call at work while I was in school saying that I got in. And so um, uh, he came over to the school, and I got called down to the office, and I was so scared that I did something wrong. I was just, like trying to go through everything in my head. But um, I got called down, and I saw my dad standing there, and he told me. I was just screaming. I was so excited. And I couldn't even believe it at first. But um, then I, walked, I was walking down to my, my eighth period class, which is band class. And I just told one person, and I guess someone overheard, and he screamed it in front of the whole class. So I was trying to keep it kind of on the down low, but it didn't work. But so um, on April 15th, we flew out to New York, me, my dad, and my little sister. And, um, and then we had orientation that night. We met everybody, and we got the schedule and the music and everything. And um, the day after, on the 16th, we, we got up. Everyone was stayed in the same um, hotel. And we all met in the lobby, and we rode our buses out to the place where we were working. And we had really tough. Um, we had to work really hard. We had to learn the whole program one day, which for everyone included the opening, the closing, and then they had two other separate um, acts that they were in. And my group, I was a sec. There are four groups, and I was the second to young in the second to youngest act which was the standing ovations. And so we also did a chorus line of thing. And we did America from West Side Story, which we sang and we danced in it. And so we learned everything the first day. It was a lot of hard work. We went from about 8 to like 6.30. And then um, the next few days, we just finished learning and reviewing everything. And, and then the night of the 19th or 18th, we performed everything. And we actually, the host of the show, it was actually in a Broadway theater, in the Imperial Theater in New York City. And the host of the show was Jay Rodriguez from Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. So I got to meet him and I got his autograph and a picture and everything. And um, we also, one of the top speakers was, um, the man who played the Tracy Turnblad's mother in Hairspray, which I also got to see that weekend along with um, Rent. And then my one of my other coaches, he is actually, he was the understudy for the main role in the producers. And my parent, my actu actually my dad and my sister went to see him when he was doing the main role. So that was kind of neat. And then my actual coach was, um, he's actually in a professional ballet right now, so. Now it is time to go to Teresa Brueggemann's first grade class at Harvey Dunn Elementary. They've been working on a special animal project. Hi, mine's Joel Green, and the uh, students call me Mr. Joel. 
I'm a senior volunteer with the Retired Senior Volunteer Program, a program we call America Reads. And I have worked with uh, Teresa Brueggemann for the last five years in this very classroom. I have between three and 400 students that I work with at three schools. This is a wonderful program that Mrs. Brueggemann has done in having the children do animal research projects. She has a very large class of 27 students and she has just done a tremendous job in organizing these students in this particular program. Hi, I'm Teresa Brueggemann and I'm a first grade teacher at Harvey Dunn Elementary School. What you're going to see is a culmination of the science reports that the kids chose to do um, in part of our science um, as animals. They've learned about many of the different ways animals move, um, many of the different characteristics of animals, and the kids wanted to learn about many of them, so they chose um, to do that by researching. The first graders in Mrs. Brugman's class have been busy working on an animal unit. We learned how all animals are the same. All animals eat, they move, they have a type of covering, and they all have a habitat. As part of our unit, we each chose a particular animal that we wanted to learn more about. Our parents helped us to find information about our animal, and Mrs. Brugman helped us to organize the information into our research report. She also had us create cool dioramas to go along with our research reports. So instead of learning about one or two animals throughout this unit, we've learned about 28 animals. Our senior volunteer, Mr. Joel Green, looked through his collection of stamps and shared some of his animal stamps with us. He thought that since we worked so hard on this unit, it would be a good idea to share our work with you. So today, we'd like to share a few of our reports with you, and we hope you enjoy them. Turtles by Carly. The animal I researched about is a turtle. A turtle is a, anim a reptile. A reptile is an animal that has scales and you and is cold-blooded. You can see this animal in an ocean in California. They live in grassy areas in the ocean. The covering of this animal is a shell and the color is green. The turtle eats sponges, seaweed, crabs, and mollusks. They the way my animal moves is by swimming with its arms and legs. The predators of my animal are sharks, foxes, and raccoons because they want the eggs. The interesting things about a turtle is that they hibernate. We enjoyed sharing our research with you. And we are Grateful to Mr. Joel, who played a big role in us being here today. Thanks, Mr. Joel.